Netflix just dropped the final season, so sad, of Orange is the New Black. And today I'm here with one of the stars of the show, actor Laura Gomez. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, before uh, we started this segment, I was just like, I cannot even imagine what this past week has been like for you. Um, of course, the premiere party was last week. Did it feel bittersweet at all? It's absolutely. It's all sorts of mixed emotions. And, but the, the funny thing is it also feels right, hmm. you know, to leave on a high note. Uh, we would have not wanted to disappoint our audience who have been so faithful and so frantic about everything that we've been saying, so supportive. And I think season seven is the perfect ending for a perfect show. Mm. Now, we've had several of the cast members of Orange is the New Black come on this show, mm. and everyone always really remarks about how tight-knit the cast is. So what was it like to have that last day shooting the series? <laughs> For me, it was the most surreal because I had, I don't want to give any uh, spoilers to people no who are yet catching up. But I was by myself for some specific reasons that you'll find out, you know, eventually. Um, and it was very odd. Um, however, it, the, the premiere was the perfect space to kind of reunite, to really give each other the right, the goodbye as, as it should. And it's a see you later, because some of us still see each other or chat. Um, so, you know, I miss um, my hair and makeup crew a lot. Oh, well, yeah, it's like everybody you work with on set so consistently. Yes. I imagine you, know, you become uh, very uh, almost familial with them yes. in a way. Um, you said that that last day was odd. Was that because, like, you were alone having to shoot your scene? The last that, like... scene, it was, yeah, I had to travel to L.A. for one final scene that I had by myself. So I finished in New York. There was, like, the whole element of finishing, but then there was an extra thing, so it felt so isolated um, and yet that's the nature of this business so it, you, you take it as you, actors we are a rare breed we have to <laughs> deal with stuff <laughs> yeah now your character Blanca Flores goes through quite a transformation over yes. the course of all seven seasons of the show yes. when you started out did you anticipate that she was going to go through that kind of transformation oh no, no I never even anticipated that I was going to be more than two or three episodes I mean I was supposed to be this character with a p possible recurring and never in my life would I have imagined that it would be this journey, uh, let alone this powerful, impactful um, presence, you know, and, and in a way revolutionary. She ends up being quite, a, quite an individual who stands to, to abuse an authority, mm -hmm. I think. Well, well speak, I mean, speaking of those themes, um, this season, of course, touches on ICE and immigration. Um, she has a really brutal and timely yeah. uh, storyline. So, yeah. you know, what, what was it like to, um, you know, act in a show that uh, so parallels everything that's happening right now? You know, it was a very powerful but also very emotional um, season for, for me particularly being, it was a, a series of emotions because it was a it's part of it's a privilege to be in a show this important it's a gift as an actor to be a part of such an important topic this is happening in real time so we're mirroring society and um i'm dealing with emotions that are have to do with real people are going through this i'm portraying an, a fictional character that is mirroring that and we have organizations like freedom for immigrants that are mentioned in the show actually um, so in, in, there's a scene where Gloria mentions them and it has been important to me as a person also to, to be, uh, educated about everything that's going on on a deeper level. And I think that's what season seven is doing. It's making you look at reality. You cannot escape it. Mm. Well, you're, you're, you get quite political on Twitter as well. Um, <laughs> I mean, has the show inspired you to be more outspoken in that kind of way? Yes. I think, you know, I've always been very, very aware. It's, my nature and also I come from a very um, gladly, uh, I have very educated parents who helped, who taught me to think and to be a part of something, you know. And then this show comes to kind of emphasize um, uh, what's already in my instincts. And I think it educating me on subjects that maybe would have not been in not only my radar, but our radar, right? It made it mainstream to talk about prison reform and uh, privatization of prisons and now detention centers and how this is a part of a uh, capitalistic process of making money out of immigrants and, and prisoners. It's just not right. So it's like you need to be a part of the resistance or else you're a part of 
problem. Hmm. Well, I want to look forward to the next chapter of what you're going to be working on. Um, you're working on a, a movie called Sunshine. Right? I, uh, well, yeah. I just finished shooting that oh, in the Dominican Republic. Yes. Um, what can you tell us about this project? It's fun. Well, for me, it's important to be connected to Latin America. I'm from Dominican Republic, and it's been a gift to be a part of that um, that movement of cinema over there because I feel it's all connected, and these are human stories that are also weird. I'm telling about where I'm coming from. So it was important for me. I'm developing now writing two projects that I plan to shoot between New York and Dominican Republic. I also am planning to direct. So I'm kind of leaning in that direction. And it was kind of the step, a step forward to that. I did a film before called Samba that went to Tribeca and it went, it went really well in film festivals. And I think that Sunshine is going to be the same. Uh, a very different character from Blanca and something that takes me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> so, and now, and now I'm here, um, you know, looking for a job, guys. <laughs> but also writing yeah. those roles that are not always given to us. And I think that's something that we actively have to do. So I'm very inspired in that, in that sense. Like I'm actively writing uh, screenplays and plays yeah. um, for women and for women of color. Yeah. Well, I have to ask you, um, before we go, is there anything that you're going to miss the most about playing Blanca? Oh, my God. You know, it's been such a gift to be a part of a show that is talking about this important topic. So every time I read a, a, a script, it felt important. It didn't feel like I'm just playing something out of the air. I'm going to miss the depth of our show, and I'm going to miss the familiarity of our set, you know, coming to a set where everybody knows your name. It's like going to Cheers type of thing. Um, so that, I will miss the depth of Blanca Flores. But, you know, hopefully I get to, to I'm building something, and hopefully it will translate into other roles. Mm. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you for having me. And of course, the final season, I'm so sad, I'm going to keep <laughs> saying it, of Orange is the New Black is on Netflix now. Up next, Zach and I read your tweets. <laughs>